Hello and welcome back. We are going to jump into some spring decorating, which I historically start with first. And I'm talking about my porches. I normally start decorating my porches first of every season. I feel like it's a win for if things get away from me. I, if I am not able to decorate the rest of the house, at least I have the porch done. At least it's welcoming for the guests. And it is sort of the statement for whoever comes, family and friends. So I didn't actually start with my porch this year. I did some work in my room. I just kind of got distracted with finishing up the living room. We're doing stuff in the kitchen, which I need to share with you. Uh, we're looking at wood floors. Anyway, there's a lot going on. So the porches kind of fell through the cracks but we are gonna focus on the porches today and I have a really fun piece to start us off with and a little story that goes with it. So let me just take you along, just checking in as well with your um, 2024 design goals. You heard some of mine there for a moment, but if you are struggling, like you had these big ambitions in January and you are hitting the wall and just feeling like you don't know what's wrong and you're getting discouraged and that happens to everyone I think. Um, it happens to me. I actually think that decorating your own home is potentially harder than doing someone else's home. I know that I, I can really overanalyze my own home and just start obsessing over the tiniest thing and I just need a break from it. And I notice I don't feel that way. I don't feel at that high pressure on, on my homes I work on for people. So just be encouraged if you're hitting a wall with your own home. I feel like that's kind of normal with your with your own space because you're just in it all the time and it's it's all it's all on you. It's not no one else is weighing in on it the same way. So if you are finding that you're hitting a wall and you're confused about why things aren't looking like the picture on Pinterest that you were inspired by in the first place, I have a workshop for you that you're invited to join me on. It's called 10 Decorating Mistakes and How to Fix Them. And you can join me for an hour long workshop. It's free to you. I'm gonna give you the link below and hopefully that's gonna help you go forward and solve some of these um, roadblocks that you may be running into with your plans that you started with, with such high hopes at the beginning of the new year. All right, without further ado, let's get started on this porch. I always like to start each season off with a good, at least a sweep down of cobwebs and dirt, and um, if not actual like a power wash deal, but I think it's a great opportunity to, to kind of hit the reset button on your spaces. And then I had this cabinet, we've had it in storage because we put the wood on this wall here for the winter time, but we brought it back out. It's a thrifted, or not a thrifted, actually I inherited this piece and then painted it. And I keep my gardening supplies in it and I just really enjoy styling it up. So spring is the perfect time to pull it back out. Then my daughters thrifted this bench. They paid $5 for it. I'm so proud of them. I think they found it at a garage sale. And I've got some ideas which I will put up here for you but I am I'm just at this point this is my inspiration piece is this darling little bench but I have all these other things too that are I can't do them all but I just kind of have all these big pieces and ideas sitting out here with the urns which are actually from our driveway gate and the rocker and the bench but I'll, I've got some paint samples here. We're going to try out some of these paint. I do want to clean it up because it looks looks a little like it's seen some better days. But I also have this blue fabric and a bespoke project and ended up not using it. So I have that. Um, okay, so let's try out some samples of paint. This is Lichen from Fusion Mineral Paints. And I really like that. And then this is Celery Seeds from Magnolia Home. It's chalk paint. So just some little paints I just had on hand from other projects. This is Mora from Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint. Oh boy, I can see I did not add enough water. It's kind of gritty. But I, at least I can get a color sample out of this. It's a powder that you mix with water. So I really am liking the, the lichen. <laughs> liking the lichen. And I have, I hope, just enough left that I could paint all of these slats on this bench. 
I think that will be good. These are my inspiration pictures. So I really like like the solid green and then that would be the fastest. I could do wooden slats and I'll show you here a little, there I put a little wood slat there to show you how cute that would be if I replaced them with you know some fresh wood. But I think that will take a little more time than what I want to deal with. So I've decided to sand it down and paint just the slats lichen. And then I will seal the iron parts. On the other side of the door, I have this little bistro table set up. I got this from Ikea with two chairs. And I really wanted to feel like kind of like a French greenhouse or something. I, I bought these so cute these little vintage flash cards i paid three dollars each which you could make these in fact i'm gonna make you a link and you can get it in the description below where you just i'll give you a printable and you can just print these three out that i made i'll make them for you so i'm gonna run to home depot though and grab some herbs and things because i, I want like a french or kitchen herb garden feel and so, um, ooh, I like these bowls of lettuce. What a fun idea. I'm going to grab some herbs that I really do work with a lot. Um, I have basil, I have chives, cilantro, and a few others. Ooh, the ferns. I always love ferns. Love, love visiting the nursery each year, each spring. So I might have overbought on the herbs, <laughs> we'll see, but I like filled half my trunk. <laughs> All right, let's get this little bench polished up. I've got my painting coveralls on and I have, I'm using sandpaper. I actually switched to a wire brush, which was a little bit better um, for the, for all the little nooks and crannies of the, the wrought iron. And then for the wood, I'm coming back in with this sandpaper that's a 150 grit. Now, I normally use a 220. That's my standard sandpaper. But the lower you go in number, the, that means that it's coarser and so I, I used a stronger one here but this is rust-oleum a clear coat enamel which I think you should have on hand for sealing things like this I'm just gonna seal all of the chippiness in place and I can make it perfect later if I want to but for this season I'm just gonna seal it cleaned it up so there's nothing too crusty on it and then I'm going to try to stretch this mineral paint. One thing I forgot was that mineral paint is amazing in how, like, the coverage. I mean, I do, like, one coat, and it, um, look at that, one coat. I just think that's amazing. And I only did, I mean, I could, like, dip the brush one time in the paint and do an entire slat it just it's sort of oily feeling and it just goes and goes and goes it's a wonderful product I'm actually trying to get them to come to bespoke because I so believe in their products fusion mineral paint so I ended up using exactly the rest of it I had just enough I even painted underneath you can see I'm doing that here you don't have to do that but I was just kind of on a roll so just cleaning everything up and then I had to go back on the ends here with a little brush and get some of the detailing in so I'm really happy with how it's turning out I feel like I just cleaned it up just enough but didn't take away that vintage goodness you know with some some age showing through so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to get this cabinet styled up so just 
wiping it down with some Mrs. Myers and pulled out some of my old decorations and gardening needs that I had stored away in the garage. some popsicle sticks with a sharpie, I have my watering can, I have my clippers, I got this frame at Brimfield. I need to go back to Brimfield. You guys want to go with me? I need to plan a trip. I love antiquing at the Brimfield flea market, or antique show, I guess is what it's called. Okay, then I have some Ikea baskets with some twine in them, and then another one that I put my gloves in. These are just decorative. My friend, I think she thrifted these for me, but I was a beekeeper for many years, and so she gave that to me, that little set for my birthday one year. And then Halden Garden, I'm a sucker for beautiful seed packets. So this is actually a desk organizer that I thrifted, and I see it all the time now. <laughs> that is, I think, from the 70s. It's faux wood. It's just plastic, but I see it on Etsy and in Goodwill and things. I got both of these um, metal containers at Magnolia. Made a trip there. And then these, um, I think I got these at a garage sale. These little pops. So cute. Last but not least, this is a recipe holder that my mother-in-law gave me when I got married. I keep the rest of my seeds in there. And that will, that will do it. It's just enough. You don't want to over style things. Okay, now I pulled all of these out of my trunk and I'm thinking, good grief girl, you overdid it. I was just having a blast just buying all these herbs. I have mint and I have lettuce and <laughs> Thai basil and sweet basil. So I always like to lay out my garden designs while everything is still in pots. Make sure that it's all going to fit and you know kind of move things around if I want to. So I did that first and lo and behold I got exactly the right amount. It's going to be great. So I have enough to do two the two urns, and I'll do them, I'll style them up exactly the same. And these are gonna be my little kitchen herb gardens right outside on the porch. I've already used them, it was so fun just to go pick off some basil leaves and things I needed for cooking. Then I'm just going to add in the rest of these and add some fill them in with dirt. Then I did buy some alyssum for this sweet little. Um, bunny pot I thought this would look cute on the on the bench makes me think of children so As I was painting this, I realized that these back slats were at one time screwed into place. There's holes for it, but they're gone. So now this is an egg print, an art. This is actually from IKEA. You wouldn't know it, but I love it. So and then I have, I think I spent a dollar on those little pant hangers. You can get those at garage sales. Grab, have a few of those on hand. I feel like they're good for some artwork. And then oh, I made this topiary. I had to replace the stick because it already rotted out. <laughs> so I added a dowel and then used some dark wax to age it a little bit. Then these plants made it through the winter so they get to go back. I don't even know what they are. I think one's jasmine. I don't know. And then I have just some books. I feel like these were springy colors, kind of like the eggs trying to repeat the colors. You want to repeat your colors three times whenever you're decorating. So I, I liked um, just the combinations of the greens and blues and, 
and then I actually have a, an art print too that has the, all of these colors and I'll put that up on the wall too. Um, this is from my dear Anne who is my um, virtual assistant who holds everything together around here and then back to my little flashcards which don't forget to get your own copy I'll link them for you below and I have this little wire stand which I put Christmas cards in and I, I keep it with my Christmas decorations but this is another fun piece that I would recommend grabbing if you see it when you're out thrifting or antiquing I just feel like I regularly use it for decorating I think it's good and here's the final look there's that bird picture that has the blues and greens that was really good okay there it is our little 2024 spring porch So thank you so much for watching. I think I'm gonna save the navy that we talked about in the very beginning. I think I'm gonna save it for the summer. But a couple things to know. So in the fall, we talked about redoing this porch. We did have a contractor come out, but then that didn't work out. So we're gonna do it ourselves, them ourselves, the two in the front. And when I say we, I mean Colby is going to put them in and we're gonna start that very, very soon. So this may be the last porch tour that I do with this particular porch. I may not be able to do a summer tour, which makes me sad. But if I do, I'm gonna pull out that navy fabric again and get that going out here. I think that'll look really, really good. And you may have noticed that the um, herb planter up here behind me is very crooked and that was just a little clue that this porch is giving out so the house was built in 1906 and um, since then people poured concrete over a wooden porch which is now giving out all over and it's just time we have to replace the porch and so uh, that will be coming and I'm really excited about that a little nervous and a little nervous to see what we might find with the foundation underneath but you know we got to keep going so Stay tuned for that, and if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button so I can send you more videos on how to make your home beautiful and functional, and as always, take care, and I will talk to you soon.